What's up guys, this is Tan Tan here. Welcome back to my channel. So today let's have a look at the Transformers Studio Series Age of Extinction Galvatron. I know that this is a highly anticipated figure because we have got the three previous Megatrons and since the first trilogy they have done almost every character. So it is time for us to move on to the Transformers 4 and 5. So this is not the first release of Age of Extinction. I, I don't know the exact number, but, but we got Grimlock, we got Stinger. So like we got a couple of figures and this is the latest one. This is the Voyager class Galvatron. So let's begin. So the first and foremost problem with Galvatron is back in the movies, he doesn't really have a clean transforming mechanism. He only got a stupid transforming sequence by Transformium. So yeah, it is hard and I remember back in the days when they released a Voyager class figure of Galvatron That was like a disaster figure because you got all this huge backpack And the only way to displace him nicely is to remove all the backpacks, but then you can transform So when I heard that they gonna make a studio series Galvatron It was up and down for me because at the time, you know, Unique Toy just released a Galvatron and it looks stunning This is like that is the perfect Galvatron of Except for extinction. And so when I got this figure, I was pleasantly surprised because of how clean he is. That is really nice. But apart from a few up and down, I think that they were a figure that worth collecting. So let's find out why. So for Gabatron, here we have, and the first impression is that he got a lot of bright silver highlight paint onto his body. The most of the body is gray, and that is accurate to the film. And the fact that he got a lot of bright silver reminds us of the original Megatron which has a very clean look unlike his Revenge of the Fallen or Dark of the Moon rusty looks and that is first and of course all the bright silver highlights are great you got some in the face, some in the torso, arms, shoulders, thighs and legs and which is nice the only place missing were the feet I wish that they would put some bright silver highlight here that would look a lot better and apart from that you got some black on the leg that is for transforming you got some of course you got the orange holes and you got some highlight of metallic blue and one downside about this problem is that the holes I don't really like the holes it's just like in the movie but in the movie the hole is actually orange from inside but here you only got you know that darkness so it is feel kind of empty because what looks for me in the movie is that he still got the holes but or everything inside is orange so it actually looks like a grinder or like you know some arc reactor of Iron Man but here you got that solid black poking out inside and that is bad, really bad. But one fe cool feature about the hole is that if you turn him around, you'll see another end of the hole. So that is like pretty cool. But unfortunately, you won't be able to plug any sword into this hole because th that is like really small. This is a very small hole. For the face, and I must say, this is an excellent face sculpt. You got that evilness looking, but yet some modern technology splash. That is like the inspiration of the Gavatron from Age of Extinction. Highly detailed really nice pin and look just look at the red eyes they are perfect the eyes are big and it pops on to the bright color of the face really nice of course you still got some blue mustache thing i don't like it but yeah it is nice the head to me is 10 out of 10. i cannot expect any better heads of galvatron from hasbro now I'm down to the torso and as i have mentioned you got the whole problem but besides that all the detailing looks really nice but one down thing for me is that it looks kind of flat to me looking from this side it, there is barely anything at all so i wish that actually some thing that pop up you know that a new chest piece would be great so yeah about that i will be looking forward for to dna and about and one more thing is that only the top of the torso section got painted but the bottom half is like unpainted and to me i would wish that they paint it and oh, i can do it myself it look because it could make the figure looks more detailed and you know in line now to the arms one of the to me this is one of the down point of this figure is that the arm are kind of short and small i would wish that they are bigger and not hollowed inside like this this is kind of disappointing to me like gavatron should have a bigger arms because that would make him look more menacing and look you know looking stronger and the arm is nothing special but there's one feature that i am really disappointed that hasbro left out is that the blade you know this blade right here in the movie they actually popped out but unfortunately for this figure we don't have anything to associate with that that is quite a shame for the bottom half this is all the thighs and with all the details i mean the the legs look great they are they are bulky they are strong but yet because of this bulkiness 
it makes the arm looks even weaker. So yeah, definitely upgrading the arms. The arms in this figure is, is one of his weakest points. Other than that, I mean, this is a, very, a rather clean transformation. I have no complaint at all besides, again, the arm and the chest. So for the accessories we got, first is this main weapon. This is the cannon that he forms out his hand. And this is the same Studio Series style weapon. So to attach it, you simply plug it here. And now he got some arm cannon. To me, I have always hated this idea. I think it looks kind of funny because all the things are spreading out. So yeah. And it got painted in bright silver, which is a good thing. And this is the missile pod that came, but this is more of a truck, but you can also attach it onto the arms. So he can shoot some missile out of his arm. It is nice. I'll store it. You can just plug it in here. And this is really cool. So for some size comparison, here we have Gavatron next to Studio Series Stinger and the last night Voyager class Optimus Prime. So as you can see, Gavatron and Stinger here are, on, are in the perfect scale. They are nice with each other. But on the other hand, Gavatron and Prime may look the same height. But this is, remember, this is Prime from the state of the last night. That is like the pre-Studio Series state. So of course the figure will be a little bit higher, but then okay, from this look here, they're still perfect to stand each other. So this even makes me want a Studio Series Knight Optimus even more. Now for some action and articulation. We begin with the head. It can look up a little bit and down mostly. 360 spin. Arms move around, shoulders out like that, which is great. And I like the fact that they got a hidden joint here. So it only shows when you bend it, which is pretty cool. This is a bicep swivel, double, double banded elbow. And one thing which is sucks is that the hands, the hands don't have any articulation at all, which is a sh disappointment, massive disappointment for a Voyager class at this point. You got a waist swivel, which is nice because he doesn't got hindered with anything. Kick to the front, which is great. Kick to the back, also nice. Split, kind of hinder because of the thickness of the thigh. You got a thigh swivel. This is the bend of the knee, 90, over 90 degree a little bit. You got a great pivot. I mean, articulation wise, this is a 50-50 thing to me. He's decent, but not that decent for a Voyager class because of the arms. Like I said, the arms are one of the weakest points of this figure. So yeah, displaying him would be nice, but about playing with him, that would be a, a bit of a problem. And that is all about the robot. Let's get to the outer mode, but let's begin the transformation. Finished transforming Gavatron, all I can say is that this is a fairly decent vehicle mode if you're looking at it from the front. I mean, the shell forming mechanism has done its bidding. What we got here is a clean looking truck, really nicely done. All the details are shown perfectly, just like in the film. You still got some silver paint, some glossy black paint on it. And of course, a lot of little blue for the light as well as some silver for the turning light. From the front you see this is a fairly decent looking truck. All the highlight has done its job. It looks great to me. This is a perfect looking truck from the front. But the only problem would show when you turn him around. As you can see here, this he, he this is him resulting in a tons of cables. Especially all the legs detail over here. And I must say this is fairly disappointing considering that one of the older figures like the Studio Series 38, the Optimus Prime from Bumblebee, 
is also this kind of truck and he's done a, a lot more better job at covering all the cables or even before that you got the Voyager from the last night Optimus Prime so you can see here the back section is actually a lot cleaner and I must say that I am surprised by the sizing here because Optimus Prime is a lot longer than Galvatron and this is about all about the front section because Optimus Prime have this all this section here which is really long and big while Galvatron is like a flat nose truck and for the weapon storage features on to on here you got this this is the cannon that I have shown you before and you're just gonna plug it here and it is quite difficult to plug in because you need to plug it from the upside down and of course you still got one more thing is this this is his missile port which he has shown in the, in the movie and just simply attaches like this and I know it looks kind of stupid a truck having this kind of rocket but but it is what it is from the movie so yeah but then unfortunately when I got this I was expecting for this missile to be can be plugged onto my stinger because as I recall stinger also has that features in the movie and yeah you can find these two slot here but the result is that they are quite loose because Stinger's gap is a lot bigger and for the final comparison here we have Gavatron next to Stinger this is two of the KSI advanced model and yeah they look great together I enjoy the scaling Stinger is a little bit a little bit better onto the alternate mode because of the cleaner look than Gavatron but onto the robot mode, I think Gavatron definitely looks better than Stinger's. And as for this release of the Studio Series Gavatron, I'm really looking forward to the release of the Studio Series Age of Extinction slash The Last Night Optimus Prime. That is a figure that I have been long waiting for. And so that will be it for today, guys. So I will see you guys later. Turn out.